Welcome back, everyone, to the One No Pod. I'm Seth Engel. Got I'm Spencer Repchick. Yep, and we're uh, joined today by 24-7 sports beat writer for Virginia, uh, Jackie Franchulis here. So thank you so much, Jackie, for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. So the big news today is, you know, obviously Penn State filling their open wide receivers coach position with Marcus Higgins, who's a longtime assistant coach on Virginia. Um, he's been there since I think 2013. Um, and now he comes to replace Taylor Stubblefield. That was an opening that was, you know, it was really just open for about a week there. Um, a lot of names were thrown in the hat and, and, uh, Hagen's is the guy who, uh, ultimately is going to get the job. So Jackie, just to start things off, I've seen in social media, a lot of people speak highly of him, you know, right off the bat, what is Penn state getting in, in, uh, coach Hagen's? Yeah, he is probably one of my um, favorite coaches that I've ever covered um, as, as far as college football goes. He actually was a player at Virginia first, went on to the NFL, came back as a grad assistant and has been at Virginia for most of his coaching, all of his coaching career. So he's he's and his family have been really big on the UVA community front. His wife is actually a Virginia women's basketball alum as well. And alongside her, her, their sons are also a big part of the program. So when you think of Coach Higgins, you think of everybody. You think of what you get in, in, in its entirety. You get a good human being as well as a good coach. You talk to players and you say that this family becomes your family. So wide receivers go over to dinner over there. You get high school recruits saying they feel like he's a second father on, on campus. So you're getting a guy that brings the whole package. He's very well connected in the state of Virginia. Penn State has done an amazing job recruiting the Mid-Atlantic, especially hitting Virginia, getting, I believe, five or six of the top 10 guys. So you're getting a guy who's really good at recruiting the same area that Penn State has come in and tried to pretty much get everybody they wanted in the area. So he's really well respected in that Tidewater, Virginia Beach, Norfolk area. A lot of recruits there in the 24-25 class that are going to be well-respected. Hanks, I mean, Mackay White, a wide receiver um, out of King George, Virginia. Yeah. As soon as this um, news came out, he's already planning a visit to Penn State. I mean, that is a type of reaction you're going to get from high school recruits. He's very well-respected. Again, he's a very, very good coach and very good human being. So this was not as big of a shock as for UVA um, as far as the change coming, obviously with the tragedy that happened in November he was very, very close with Lavelle Davis. Lavelle Davis was kind of like a son and a brother to his sons. And this is a fresh start for him and his family. So Penn State is getting an overall a good coach in Marcus Higgins. Yeah, and you bring up the family atmosphere thing from the start. And right away, that's that, that was in James Franklin's statement where he's like, well, this guy aligns with our values, um, just aligns with the whole coaching staff, obviously shares the connection with Anthony Poindexter, um, Point Dexter actually coached him, um, and then they coached together down the road. Um, or they, no, maybe they didn't. Maybe it was just Point Dexter coached him. But anyway, um, I know when you bring up recruiting and recruiting in Virginia, it was a worry that Spencer had. Where okay, Penn State's already recruiting well in Virginia. Maybe they want to try, you know, a different region. Spencer, what 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 were your kind of thoughts there? Yeah, well, I mean, you look at his recruiting history and he's dominated. He's done very well in the Virginia area, but when you look at Penn state, like you said, Penn state does really well at the Virginia area already. So why my question is kind of what does he bring to the table? Why should Penn state go back to Virginia and get another guy from Virginia? Cause they've already recruited so well in Virginia. So what does he bring to the table that somebody across, maybe say Penn state wants to recruit and, California or somebody, what does he bring to the table that somebody like that wouldn't necessarily bring up? Well, first, because if you're Penn State, you don't want to spend your time and resources in California in the first place. You still want to recruit that radius, that five, six hour radius. That's how a successful program is built. So you mm -hmm. want to continue to have a strong home in Virginia, especially because other programs are trying to get Virginia, especially in the 24, 25 cycle, where there's a lot of good national rated recruits. You've got Chris Jones, a linebacker that is being recruited for Penn State. Um, also from, from Michigan, from Alabama, from Florida, SEC is trying to come in Virginia too, because technically you can even say that Virginia is in the SEC territory too, because it's that South. Um, so if you're James Franklin, like I'm going to make sure that if 
I'm recruiting a guy. I'm going to put my best coaches there. I'm going to make sure that this is Penn State area and no one's going to come in here. Make sure you kind of say this is my territory. But the thing with Coach Higgins is, although that a lot has been said about his in-state recruiting in Virginia, and he also recruits North Carolina, the Charlotte area, and some Florida as well. Um, he recruited some parts of South Florida. So you're, you're seeing all that. And, you know, there's a players that he recruited that he's not the area recruiter or even the position recruiter, a defensive back, Antonio Clary is from Jacksonville, Florida. One of the reasons why he recruited was because of the message that Coach Higgins had during his official visit. So although he was not an area recruiter or the primary position recruiter, he was able to help sell the program on the visit. So that is what Higgins is going to bring to you because he's able to connect with recruits because he's going to say, listen, I, you know, I was a quarterback in college. I had this success. I went to the NFL, had this success. I still have connections to the NFL, which is important. I still have, con like, you know, one of his best friends is Iverson. I mean, his son talks about Uncle Iverson, uh, Paul Iverson from the Virginia Beach area. He's still friends with like Chris Long. All these, those NFL connections also is going to be like recruits are going to think, wow, you know, all these people on these coaches, all these scouts at the NFL ranks, that means you can help connect me to them moving down to the next stage as well. So that's what Coach Higgins will help you there. So I, I understand that you don't really, you, you're just focused on the Virginia area, which again, I think it's smart from James Franklin. Actually, when he was hired, I thought that was really smart for Penn, for Penn State to do because you're going to dominate Maryland, Nova, and uh, the DMV and Virginia in its entirety. And that's what you want to do if you're a Penn State but you're also getting a guy that has been able to recruit different areas under Bronco Mendenhall. They handled recruiting a little differently. So under that staff, you recruited your position, not areas, which was a little different how you handle normally in recruitment. So coach Hagen's had to go to different States to get his recruitment. So Dante Avian Wicks was in Louisiana. So Marcus Hagen's was able to get some recruits and some connections through Dante Avon Wicks, I mean, Keaton Thompson was a Mississippi State wide receiver, but he was also Louisiana native. So now you're having a couple of guys from Louisiana that Coach Higgins was able to bring over to Virginia. So there's a there's a lot of different connections that he was able to get through um, to the last few years of his, um, I guess, coaching career through Bronco Mendenhall's uh, kind of tenure. Yeah, I think it's interesting to see as like Penn State does start to move south in terms of recruiting. They obviously did a pretty good job in Florida and even brought in some Alabama guys uh, this past cycle. Um, Virginia, they're kind of locking in and then moving down. You know, Louisiana is not really a state they've recruited too well in, but I mean, maybe, you know, with the hire, they, they could start to see that for sure. I think so, two things you brought up were really interesting. I think one of them is that you said, again, they want to dominate more in the Virginia area. And I'm wondering if this hire had anything to do with Penn State losing Devin Carter and Rodney Gallagher to West Virginia. So I think James Franklin doesn't want that to happen anymore. And I feel like a guy, a guy like this can maybe make that not happen. And I think another thing you brought up was really interesting is how he was a quarterback in college, which Penn State is, has a new quarterback this year. So having a quarterback like mine coach on the staff to help Drew Aller will be also be something that will be really important. Yeah, I don't know much about those recruitments per se, but yeah, having an extra guy like that to have these, I mean, UVA was hosting a junior day this weekend and they had a few Virginia kids on the expected visitor list. And both of them have just told me that they're not visiting UVA no lo any longer. And one of them is considering a visit to Penn State. That was immediately after the news broke. Yeah. So that's the type of impact you're having. Yeah. And then another form of impact, I, I feel like his numbers kind of speak for themselves in terms of you know, on field progress. I think, you know, Virginia has been a great passing team over the past few years. Um, in 2021, I mean, they averaged 300, like 92 passing yards a game, had four receivers over 600 receiving yards. Um, so what does he bring to the table in terms of an on field coach? Um, and then also, they someone called him like the stickiest wide receiver room in the country, I think in 2020. So, so how is he as, a, as an on field guy? Yeah. So if you take away what happened this past year, which was kind of an anom anomaly for the passing game, um, what you see from his room is they they're really it's really rare for them to drop passes, which is what this this last year was very 
shocking to many UVA fans and those that cover Virginia, especially with the way his wide receiver room generally performs. Um, but yes, what he's been able to do is Penn State is blessed that their their admissions there it's a hard school to get into, but their admissions isn't as restrictive as Virginia. So what Kagan's had to do at Virginia was recruit a certain athlete that not only is a good athlete, but also can get into the program, get it into the school. And so Virginia, whenever you hit to recruiting trail there, let's say if you have 100 kids that you're recruiting, maybe like 40 of those are only able to get into the school. So they really cut down. And out of those 40, 40 kids, some of those are going to be looking at other programs. Those four, 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 four or five stars are going to go to Penn State, are going to go to Alabama, are going to go to uh, what have you, UNC. So Coach Higgins, what he has done is able to find those diamonds in the rough, um, those guys that are like mid three star and even some two stars and bring them on board to UVA and develop them. So what he's done at Virginia says a lot of what he can do with an athlete. So imagine at Penn State where you're able to get those four and five star recruits in pretty consistent level and get these top 24 seven athletes on campus. So imagine what Kagan's able to do with that talent, because what he's been able to do at Virginia says a lot about him. What Dontavian Wicks, who's now invited to the NFL Combine, what he was able to do going from a low level three star to what he did in 21 speaks a lot to what Hagen's did. What Alameda Zacchaeus has been able to do during his college career. He was uh, unranked, I believe, when Mike Lennon and his staff uh, first offered him. So, And then um, even on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Chris Peace is one of the best linebackers for Virginia. It was actually Coach Hagen's that found him. So even on the defensive side, he was able to get him too. Um, so yeah, so there's been, so he's been able to develop the talent, but find those diamond in the roughs and as well that you can develop into players. So he can do a lot with little. So when you have access to more resources, you're going to get more. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I think at Penn state too, that's really important when this is a year where they're losing Parker Washington, they don't have a guy like Jahan Dotson. You kind of don't know who the true number one is going to be at this point. Could be Cephas. Um, it could be Keandre Lambert Smith. So to kind of pull some of those guys, maybe deep in the depth chart and work them up so that they, they can have, you know, a greater impact. I, I think that could be, you know, maybe a reason why they brought in a guy like him who's known for just developing those diamonds in the rough. For sure. It'll definitely be uh, something to watch during spring camp to see how these guys are receptive to his coaching style as well. Sure. Yeah. And I think another thing that you said was Penn State's, definitely dealt with drops this year. I mean, in the first Purdue game, they dropped passes left and right. And bringing in a guy like Hagens, who is, has surefire hands with his receivers, is like something that Penn State really needs and could have been one of the reasons that Penn State decided to do away with Taylor Stubblefield. It's possible, yeah. Yeah, well, I think that's pretty much it for us. Uh, Jackie, is there anything else you want to add here? No, um, I think you all are getting a, a good, uh, good coach and a good human being. I will say, like, I started covering recruiting in 2013. So right about the first year that Coach Higgins was at UVA. And ironically, my first job out of college was covering UVA recruiting. So I met Coach Higgins back in 2013, the first time I covered Virginia. So he was a, uh, he was, res he respected me and uh, introduced me to the world of recruiting. I was very green, a green reporter. So um, you're getting, you guys are getting a, a, a good human and a good guy to cover. Yeah. I've heard only good things. I really have. Um, I've, I've, I'm looking forward to covering him. Hopefully we get him. I don't know if they're going to do a press conference with him um, or what, like an introductory. That would be nice. Um, I imagine it'll be a, after signing day. He's, I, I think he's actually already recruiting. So for Penn State, that's, yeah. yeah, that's not surprising though. Coaches are always on the go. Yes, but, they are. Yeah. Spencer, you got anything else or I, I think we're, we're all good here. No. Yeah. I think you touched on everything that I wanted to hear and yeah, I don't think there's anything else I can ask you. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Jackie. I really appreciate you hopping on, and uh, thank you for the time. Yeah, no yeah. problem. Have a good night, guys. Yeah, you, yeah too. you too. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Um, just got off the call with with Jackie there, who we talked about. Um, Marcus Higgins, he's the new wide receiver coach at Penn State. Now Spencer and I are going to talk a little bit about what we think. Um, I think Jackie was super helpful and just kind of – understanding from a deeper perspective the hire itself uh, without just looking at a 
24 seven recruiting ranking and saying, okay, well, he's brought in just one four star in the past few years. Uh, this guy sucks. We're not saying that. So we're going to, we're going to break it down. We're going to grade the higher and, you know, talk about kind of what we think here. So we'll start off with Spencer here. Um, right off the bat, what, what were your thoughts and, and how, have, how have they changed over the course of the day? So I've had this, I mean, after hearing what Jackie said, I've definitely felt more comfortable with the hire. I, at the beginning of the day, I was just wondering why would you fire Taylor Stubblefield and bring this guy in? Because I don't know if he's any better. I mean, I see three reasons they hired him. One, obviously, is the connection with Anthony Poindexter. Two is I think he does a really good job at getting so many wide receivers involved. Like he had multiple receivers over 500 yards, which Penn State, I don't, they haven't done that in a while. They usually just have the one guy and then there's maybe a side guy. They don't have a really well rounded wide receiver group. And three, I think, is just because, like Jackie said, he takes three star guys and makes them four or five stars over the span of their career, which I think is another thing Penn State can really use in their development process from taking these younger guys and making them good before they see some starting reps. So overall, I'm still going to grade it around the B area because I feel like Penn State definitely still could have done better. I mean, his NFL, the NFL prospects, he's, I mean, yes, he does get three stars out of high school. So he has to do a lot to make them NFL prospects, but he doesn't really have that many. I mean, compared to what Stubblefield was able to do with like Dodson and everybody, I don't know if this was that much of an upgrade. So I'm still going to give him around the B to B plus range. I mean, it's a good, it's okay hire. I mean, it's nothing you would wow me out of my seat when I saw it this morning. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm in a way I'm in the same boat as you because I was a guy who saw this as an opportunity for Penn state to go out and get a big name, you know, get a guy that was maybe a failed offensive coordinator, someone else, somewhere else, or maybe even, you know, bring a guy in from the NFL. Um, so that was my initial reaction where I'm like, I I'd written, you know, replacement articles where I'm, you know, writing potential replacements. And I have big names like Jeff Scott. He was former head coach of South Florida, um, long time wide receivers coach at wide at, uh, Clemson. And then Bobby Ingram from Wisconsin, you know, he was just the OC there, Chris Beatty, which didn't end up happening because he, the chargers didn't let him go, but that was a name, you know, that people were we're bringing around and then Calvin Lowry is obviously, you know, offensive analyst right now with Penn state. And there were some questions about whether they were going to move in house with someone who had just been there for two weeks. I probably wouldn't have been the right move anyway, but I don't know when it, when it comes, when it comes to, uh, to Hagen's, I think that there's a lot of room for growth for a guy that's already been a position coach for, a power five program for 13 or for 10 years. Um, I think there's a lot that he can work on in terms of recruiting. I don't know if he's had the opportunity yet to recruit on a big scale and recruit for a team like Penn state. Cause he's had to work. It's, it's Virginia. Like yeah, Penn state is a better Virginia football school than the university of Virginia is. And that really does say a lot. Um, so he, I mean, he really has, he doesn't have that much experience bringing in, the big name, four stars and five stars. But once you give him that platform at Penn State, he could take off just based on his ability to recruit in state and then also to recruit, you know, further down in the South, like North Carolina and, and Louisiana. I'm going to give this a B plus. Um, I, I, it's not, it's, it's not necessarily the greatest hire. I think they could have maybe gotten someone that was potentially an A plus. Um, I think that the whole fitting the family values thing and everything, I think that's all really important. And you can't just go out and get someone that doesn't fit your culture. That's really important. Um, I think the best thing about this guy is that he is going to make the wide receivers that Penn state has right now better in the 2023 season. That's, that's without a doubt. That's what I think he's best at is producing, you know, he's, he doesn't have too much experience with these big name NFL talents. He mentioned like Jahan Dotson and stuff like that. Um, but what he does have is, is progress. He brings in three and he brings in three star recruits, some two stars, and he gets them to put up, you know, 600 to 900 receiving yards in a season. There's value there. There's a lot of value there. And I think Penn state could use that, especially considering their depth and wide receiver right now. 
yeah, I think another reason they bring him in, like I said at the end with our conversation with Jackie, was Penn State is dealt with drops this season. And I'm James Franklin does not like drops. He he says it every single press conference. I feel like a guy like this who's proven to have wide receivers that don't drop the ball is probably at the top of his priority list when he was looking for a uh, receivers coach. And I also just think – I think just him being from Virginia is probably the major – component to why they hired him yeah for sure all right well that's it for us um uh marcus Higgins, he's the new guy um maybe we talk to him soon probably wait till after signing day like like jackie said before because he's already out on the road like that's if if you really wonder what it's like to be a college football coach like they are he just got his new job maybe he was already notified he was probably notified about it you know a little while ago could have something to do with the reason that they were able to bring in two wide receiver transfers last week. Maybe not. Who knows? He's on the road. Everyone's on the road. It's a grind always, no matter where you are. So Marcus Hagens, he's the guy. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's about it for us. You can uh, follow along with our coverage at collegian.psu.edu and on Twitter at the one and O pod and collegian foot blog. I'm Seth. I'm Spencer. Spencer. We're the one no pod.